when a massive quake hits the Bay Area, it will be caused by shifting tectonic plates under the Earth's surface. The two plates that are really creating the problem in California meet up along the San Andreas Fault. The Pacific Plate grinds against the North American Plate as both plates move about two inches a year in opposite directions. The problem is the plates get locked together. Even though they're stuck, they keep pushing. And ultimately, enough strain energy is built up and one of the faults is going to break and it'll go just like that. A sunny Friday afternoon, without warning, 300 miles of the San Andreas Fault rupture. The force rocks the Bay Area with a devastating 7.8 magnitude earthquake. A quake this strong has never hit San Francisco skyscrapers before. Office workers high on the top floors hope their buildings survive. You go back and forth, you can feel the building sway, you can see what's happening outside the windows. Some of those windows shatter, raining deadly shards of glass on pedestrians below. Modern office buildings are built to rigid earthquake codes. However, most residences are not, and they collapse on a massive scale. They are vulnerable because they have weak ground floors, which are supported by stilts rather than solid walls. If you have residential units in the first floor, that building collapses, those people are gonna die. Even the best designed buildings risk collapse if they're built on landfill, which turns to liquid in an earthquake. When the ground starts to shake, something takes place called liquefaction and turns the landfill and sand into goo, like quicksand. For those on the road, the tremors also create chaos as the bridge buckles, rolls, and flexes. Your car may have trouble staying in the lane if you're driving across a major structure, especially a long-span flexible bridge. Because the Golden Gate Bridge can flex with the shaking, it survives the quake. But a few miles to the east, on the Bay Bridge, things are far worse. The Bay Bridge is probably the most fragile, dangerous structure in the state of California. Sections of the upper deck collapse, crushing cars on the lower deck. Then parts of the lower deck break open. Cars free fall for a terrifying 190 feet before plunging into the San Francisco Bay. And deep below those chilly waters, Thousands of commuters are trapped on BART trains in the Transbay tube. As the shaking continues, power goes out and the electric trains grind to a halt. Thousands of trapped passengers wonder what will happen next. There are several scenarios. Um, does that tube flood? If the tube floods, as many as 3,000 people could drown as it fills with cold seawater 100 feet under the bay. Now. The earthquake is about to deliver its knockout punch. Earthquakes rupture gas lines. Earthquakes destroy fire systems. Fire following an earthquake is a tremendous threat to any population. And the entire city of San Francisco is one giant fire hazard. It's a densely populated town built on hills, wood frame buildings built side by side. Minutes after the quake, dozens of fires break out across the city. And as usual, there are only 350 firefighters on duty at that moment. The fires are also spurred on by a local weather pattern. We have this wind machine that turns on every spring, and by the end of the summer, it's a very dry place, and that wind just blows. The wind gives infernos the power to leap city blocks at will. The flames overwhelm firefighters before reinforcements can arrive. And by the end of the day, the skyline is eerily reminiscent of a disaster that took place a hundred years ago.